February 22nd, and this is my third time filming this, so hopefully this one sticks. Guys, we have a goat day before us today, and uh, after the goat work, we're going to do a chipper for this sort of deload week. Where, you know, we're going long on a Tuesday, which doesn't happen, but I want you to think of it. It doesn't happen often, but think of it like this. If Monday's workout, the Chief, was very thresholdy, then that was a, there was four of you guys who can't typically make it to Thursday workouts. You got their stimulus this week. And on Tuesday, you know, today, we're going to kind of go long in a lighter uh, chipper type workout. And that's for those of you who can't typically make it to Saturdays. So it's kind of got that vibe to it today. Um, let's talk about goat work real quick. We'll just make it quick. The Open did release a, an equipment list of uh, what we need equipment wise. And it gives us a pretty good idea of what we should be working on or what which gymnastics movements may come up in the open. So if you have questions about what might come up because that's what you want to be working on, then ask your coach. We have a pretty good idea of what can and can't come up this open. Uh, that being said, like for example, ring muscle-ups will not come up in the open. They can't, the equip, they're not on the equipment list. But if that's something you're working on um, and, you know, the open be damned, I'm not going to stop you. So keep that in mind. But this is your opportunity to take 15 to 20 minutes to have, you know, to work on something you otherwise don't get the time or space to work on, but also to pick the brain of your coach to see, you know, am I doing it the right way? Am I progressing? Is there something better I could be doing? Or maybe, uh, or should I be setting my sights on something smaller of a target so that I can work my way up to where I'm going? That's my piece about goat work. The, the, the wad itself, um, we're going to time cap this one at 30 minutes today, and I'm going to kind of explain the genesis or the thought the process behind that in a minute. But uh, let's see, a couple of things, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Where have you seen that one before? You've definitely seen it maybe as a EWOD format that I'll throw out every once in a while, but you've definitely seen it in Annie, which is a, a girl workout that all of us have done at least once, I believe. Um, and so for that reason, you, the middle section of this workout today is ab mat sit-ups. You should have an idea of what 150 ab mat sit-ups does to you or in the round of 50 or 40 where you have to break them up or what kind of recovery you require in order to do these ab mat sit-ups at high volume. Another thing, we've been doing a lot of sort of throwback type workouts, meaning callbacks to recent workouts uh, that we've done over the past cycle. For an example, the Monday workouts have all been relatively the same recently, like uh, triplets at yeah, 15 minutes where there's some pushing, things like that. But today we're going to do an empty barbell front rack reverse lunge. Now, it's sort of a callback to Jackie. Now, Jackie had empty barbell thrusters, not lunges, but there is still that idea of below parallel. And today we don't have to go overhead. We're just lunging. So... If you did, Jackie, we hope that you have some sort of recollection of what it was like to hold a front rack with an empty barbell for an extended period of time. And because you're not going overhead with it, we expect that you'll be able to knock out even more reps than you were for your sort of opening salvo of Jackie. We may be wrong about that, but that's what we're going for here. If anything, as far as modifications are concerned, if you need to modify, it should be done in the service of getting the set of 50 done in less than two, uh, in two sets or less, so 25 and 25. There's not a movement I can think of where I'd ever ask anybody to do all 50 of them unbroken. There are some of you who can do that, but it's not an expectation today. Uh, maybe double unders is one where I could see asking people to do 50 unbroken. But as far as this workout's concerned, no expectation of unbroken, but an expectation that you're going to be wise about the barbell that you choose because we're prescribing empty barbells, 45 and 35, but that doesn't mean that an empty barbell is going to hit the stimulus for you, especially if you're, you know, if you haven't been lifting very long or if you don't have a ton of CrossFit experience, that might not be the appropriate weight for you. So think about scaling from a 45 to a 35, or if you usually use a 35, think about scaling down to using like a 15 pound bar with some plates on it to make it 25, something like that. All right, so that's the lunges. Then we have the sit-ups we already talked about. Finally, the row. Now you've all rowed before, um, and you've all rowed long distances before. You've all rowed for long periods of time. That's not new, but in the context of today's workout where we need to try to finish under a cap, Today is the kind of day where that's the part of this workout that where you'll either spend the most time there or 
end up working the hardest, which is fine. It's deload week, it's not easy week, you know? So keep that in mind. Um, but here's some ideas for finishing under the cap today. Because we kind of went into this stuff last week where, uh, you know, you have the knowledge now that every, not every workout is meant to be finished, right? But if you want to finish under the cap today, then I mentioned you're just going to have to row a little bit harder, which, you know, we should have a little bit of, uh, not, maybe not harder, but with more consistency is probably the best way to put it. Um, we have two ways of thinking about this today. If you already know by looking at this workout that the row is your hanging or sticking point, then let's just reduce those calories right off the bat. Let's go to 35 to start and then just decrease by seven each round. So 35, 28, 21, 14, seven. And I think you'll still absolutely get the stimulus that we're looking for here. Another way to think about it is, hey, you know, I don't necessarily know whether or not the row is my sticking point, but I'm gonna find out. For you, I like the idea of taking the first round to see if you can finish the reps of 50 under 10 minutes. And if you're not done under 10 minutes, then stop right at 10. And in the next round, you go through, you do your 40 of your lunges, you do your 40 of your sit-ups, and then do 28 on the row. Now you're in that sort of sevens protocol where you're going to, you're going to decrease by seven. Don't let the row be the reason you don't finish today when we're giving you these options. Um, or, you know, just be Icarus and fly too close to the sun and let the cap hit you. Okay, that's fine too. Uh, what else can I tell you about this workout? Let's see, for lunges, you know, I'm not gonna stand up and demonstrate right now. I did just do the workout, but make sure your feet are coming together at the top of every movement, right? You step your foot back, your knee back, it touches the ground, and then you bring it back forward, bring it in line with the other foot, and that's the end of the rep. Kinda goes without saying, but I'm throwing it out there for those of you who are gonna try to fly through this. Um, what else can I tell you? None of these movements are necessarily combatants of one another. Meaning like, you know, you're gonna do these lunges and your legs are gonna get used, but that's not your abs. So you should be able to do your lunges and then immediately jump into the, into the, uh, the, the ab mat sit-ups. Same thing with the ab mat sit-ups in the row. Now the only place where it might come into play it, or this sort of overlap of uh, stimulus come into play is the row, which you're using your lats to pull, and then your front rack, which is asking a lot of your lats to hold that barbell up. But it is an unloaded bar, and so hopefully that's not as challenging, but that's okay, right, if it is. So that's the only part that I can think of that's sort of difficult. Now, this is an EWOD type workout. Every Saturday morning when we do EWOD, somebody will say, well, what did you do? Or how was your time? And then and Joe can go like, well, if it took you 23 minutes, then it's gonna take me 42. Never does that happen, especially when we modify smartly. And I typically take my own time and add five minutes if I wanna add a cap. Today, I'm taking my own time and adding seven minutes. So I finished in 23.08. And with regards to the first round thing of I want everybody to finish the first round in under 10 minutes because that means you're probably on pace, it took me seven minutes and 35 seconds to finish the first round, right? So I absolutely, call me an optimist, I believe everyone can finish that first round in, uh, in under 10 right along with me. All right, let's see how it goes. I may be wrong, but hey, it's deload week. Let's not sweat it too much. Let's live to fight another day. Let's be healthy by Friday. I'll see you guys then.